is always a bigger math, or at least a bigger math nerd. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails. Today we're going to talk about when to farm the Gunga infection and how to do it the most effectively. For those of you who watch this channel pretty regularly, you'll know that I put this video, the very similar video at least, out a couple days ago and there were some math things that were inaccurate and I decided, uh, whereas I can't make corrections to every single video I make mistakes in because this game is crazy complicated and I would just spend all my time doing remakes uh, you know we just have to live with it and you know we all make mistakes obviously this one was egregious enough just because uh, there, were, there was math involved and there were some things that I, I feel like should be corrected especially for like the newer players the smaller level players that are going to be farming gun guns a little bit later down the line uh, a lot of my initial math stuff was, was accurate but uh, further down the line it, it's not so and anyways Let's, uh, let's continue, folks. I know this is going to cost me clicks. It's not something I would prefer to do. I'd rather be getting sleep or doing pretty much anything other than just doing redoing math that I already thought was finished. But um, the, we, we fight the battles we need to. So a uh, huge shout-out to my patrons. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for all of your support, folks. And if you want to support this channel for free, just remember, folks, if you want to, uh, I mean... If you want to do that, please like, subscribe, or comment. Any of those really helps this channel. I would really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, the algorithm isn't likely to be getting the math inaccurate or wrong. So, uh, you know, and if, even if it does, don't, don't blame math for people having done it poorly. All right? Talking to you, Sarah. So, here we go. Uh, assumptions. Two things that we're going to be assuming moving into this video. So, uh, first off, I know that not everyone does this, but I think as a foundational strategy for a lot of our accounts, people should be, in general, doing three energy refreshes every day. I still do it with my main account. I, I think that it's that's just the most cost-effective way to spend your crystals. And so any of my calculations here with math are going to just assume that you're doing 150 crystals worth of energy refreshes and none of the math is going to reflect the cost of those energy refreshes. The second thing that I'm going to be assuming, folks, is that all of these gun guns are released on hard nodes and uh, because if they're released on cantina nodes that makes it cheaper and faster to farm them and i mean that's preferable in a lot of ways so uh we're just going to ignore the cantina thing and focus on if all the gun guns are on hard nodes now uh when do you want when do you want your gun guns folks uh, and stap is just here in the graphic for no particular reason um so first off you don't want to be like working on gun guns for their own sake, but not unlocking Jar Jar like that. To me, that's that's probably the line you don't like. They're not gonna be good without Jar Jar. They're, they're gonna they're gonna do some things in three v three, whatever. They're gonna do some cool stuff, but they're not. Uh, you need you need Jar Jar to make them good. And uh, the good news is, of course, Jar Jar is going to be released on uh, every three months. They've already announced it that he is a re has, is a regularly scheduled like uh, it's just an appointment uh, character that you're going to be able to schedule around and get your stuff ready for so we can actually make a prep video like this without it without too much speculation to be honest folks um and just to be real clear folks i don't think that the gun guns are going to be doing that much stuff in the game other than being really good for the raid and the raid starts in august at some point or potentially july so we've got some time to plan around so when will the gun guns be farmable because i, I just really consider uh once once you can actually uh you know unlock jar jar that that's basically when they become farmable so uh his second release is going to be around august 2nd because he was re released initially on may 1st or May 2nd, sorry, and then three months later after that, November 2nd approximately, and then February 2nd approximately, etc. And honestly, folks, if you're working on gun guns for the raid, 
I would really recommend working on them in, for either either the goal of August 2nd or November 2nd. Once you, If you get them in on August 2nd, that will mean that you're able to farm or uh, use them for all nine months of the raid, which is great. Or November 2nd, you'll, you'll be able to use them for six months of the raid. Once you get to that February 2nd date, you stop, you're basically just farming Gungans early for fun. Uh, like you're only getting three months worth of the raid stuff. And by then we'll probably know what the new raid is and be focused on farming for that. So uh, yeah, I would, I would recommend aiming for August 2nd or November 2nd. And uh, so when will the gun guns be farmable? You can look at this. I'm probably not going to just spell it out. You can screenshot it. You can pause it. Whatever you want to do. Uh, I think the biggest thing to point out here, folks, is that Phalanx release is, uh, you know, that that's when the real farming begins. Because he's going to be really challenging to farm. He is, uh, if, if he actually is made to be farmable on June 13th, then we'll have approximately 50 days to farm him before August 2nd, and, and so we need to get that done. Um, now, the approach here, guys, the thing that is, uh, you know, the foundational math here, and this isn't something I got wrong on my previous video, is uh, if you have a three-star character, then uh, you need typically 280 total shards and despite some people saying that I'm a liar face I am not a liar face this is backed by millions of samples uh, over the course of years uh, the shard drop rate on King Cantina on hard nodes whatever no matter no matter the circumstance if you're a six star a five star character whatever uh, it is overwhelmingly evident that it's a one-third drop rate. So if I go to Cantina and I draw, uh, you know, I do three tries, uh, you know, the odds of me getting one character are, you know, what, whatever. You, you could miss or you can get three, whatever. But the, over the long course of time, it's going to even out to the point where it's one-third drop rate. And so if you need 280 shards from this three-star character, you need a total of 840 attempts or rolls. So if you go to a hard node, you do five, that counts as five out of your 840 total until you finally get that character. I realize that there is RNG involved, that it's not gonna be a perfectly pretty, you're not gonna go, most people are not gonna get the character totally farmed in exactly 840. There's variance in RNG and stuff, but typically that's how much it costs. So uh, Phalanx is the one that is probably the, the one that we need to focus most on. And the, the big math error here, folks, was for some reason I was not accounting for how many days were in uh, three months. I was only doing it for one month. And so, uh, you know, done by August 2nd, the, those numbers stay the same, 50 days. But then 90 days later, uh, I was doing calculations for 80 days later. For some reason, I just added one month instead of three. And so... Uh, the math does change, folks. If you want to get that that 140 uh, days level uh, for November 2nd, there's going to be 6.0 attempts per day, which essentially means that you're gonna have to refresh a little bit. Uh, and that you know, if you want to get the the 50 days, of course, if you want to get them done by August 2nd, then it's um you're gonna have to do 16.8 attempts per day which is that's, that's I know it's a lot I know it's a lot um that that's that's so sometimes three refreshes and usually just two uh, though it's got a shorter burn because it's um it, it's only 50 days so for, for what it's worth all right so then boomadir he got he got released a little bit later um or a little bit earlier, so he's a little bit easier to farm. And if you want to, if you're aiming for that November 2nd date, uh, it's really, you're still going to do some refreshes, but it's not too bad. And then if you're going to wait till February 2nd, you don't really have to refresh at all. You just, you just hang out. It's a six month roll through. Um, if you just get it by default, if you're pretty consistent. Uh, Car Carpal Tunnel, same thing. Uh, and if you're aiming for November 2nd, you don't even have to do refreshes for him, typically. And Boss Nass is even easier. He's super duper easy. 
Uh, okay, so if we just smash them all together here, you guys can take screenshots if you would like. I'm going to just probably skip to the TLDR section. Too long, didn't read. And uh, this is where some of the math got changed as well. And uh, just reflects on August 2nd, it's going to cost about, still going to cost about 275 crystals per day, which is miserable. But, you know, that's, that's over the course of 50 days. It's not even two full months. And then you get to have Jar Jar right before the raid starts, which to me is a pretty good value. And then otherwise, we have the, um, uh, you know, unlock on November 2nd and February 2nd, and it's barely any refreshes at all. Really, just uh, for the Boomadir and Phalanx, it's what I would think of as, you know, 0.2, like 20% of the days. One day in five, you do one refresh uh, on those two. And then if you're waiting till February 2nd, you should just have those characters all ready and good to go. So it won't even cost you any crystals. Uh, you know, of course, the usefulness of this squad diminishes greatly once that raid goes away. So, uh, you know, you kind of got to decide what's valuable to you, what's important to you. And, uh, you know, the gun guns aren't going to be world beaters, folks. Not in GAC, not in Territory Wars. They seem pretty good. That They might beat some GLs, who knows. But for the most part, I really think that they're just going to... Uh, they're going to be fine. They'll be better than Tuscans, but they're not going to be so much better than Tuscans that you should spend all your resources as fast as you can, unless it's a raid, uh, you're incentivized by the raid. Now, the one other math thing that I got wrong here, folks, was the Jar Jar Chase bundle that's out there right now is in fact not just 70 shards like I had put on, on the calculation, it's, uh, it's at least 120 shards, I think. So, uh, I mean, it makes it a really great deal. It, it would already really was. I know that it's 40 bucks if you don't want to do it. That's totally fine. I'm not trying to pressure you. But if you really, really wanted to farm this, you know, get these characters done right now, if you wanted to get Jar Jar, those are the best value. Uh, if you look at shipments, how much dollar value it is per shard, it's about a dollar and 12 cents per shard if you buy if you just buy the crystal packs and then and then turn around and buy them in shipments then uh yeah it, it's about a, a dollar 12 per shard as opposed to if you just buy the chase bundle it's it's like 33 cents per shard which is a, just a crazy deal compared to how how expensive shipments are and then um of course the, the math of refreshes, you guys can look at those as well. Uh, the Relic Combo Pack is also, uh, you know, it's an okay deal. It's, it's better than shipments, though, um, uh, you know. And, and some of these packs have other pieces of gear and stuff that make it more worth it. But one way or another, uh, the, you know, this, this is the math for the shipments and packs. And, you know, you guys can take screenshots of whatever. But I am sleepy, and I'm going to call it good. I hope I did my due diligence, and this helped people. I hope I didn't run a gloss over the points too much. But uh, that's, that's all she wrote, folks. Thank you all so much for watching. And remember that in all things, Zareth prevails. Uh, over math. <laughs> Screw you, math.